Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make these adorable, easy, gathered valentines using some supplies from our sponsor today, Paper Mart. You can check them out online at www.papermart.com and they have all you need to do these adorable, easy, little valentine favors for your classroom. I'm going to show you how to make these. The first thing you'll need to do is to um, grab some tool and what I have here is some plain pink and then I have some polka dotted pink. Now the polka dotted tool is really pretty, but I'm going to let you know that um, these polka dots, I'll bring it up close so you can see, they're kind of flocked and they will leave fuzzy bits. So it's best that if you're going to wrap food that you use pre-wrapped food, kind of like these foil wrapped chocolates, um, or if you want to use loose um, candies, make sure you put them in a cellophane bag or some plastic wrap first. So I need about a foot each of these um, tools and I'm just going to gather them together and make it make one snip with my fabric scissors here and then I'm going to lay the tool down I'm going to put the polka dot down first because it's kind of showy and I want it on the outside and then I'm going to lay the um, darker tool right across like I'm making uh, a plus sign you could use more layers if you want but for this easy class from Valentine I'm simply gonna leave it at two and keep it simple I won't be surprised if the girls end up recycling some of these um, some of these pretty tool scraps like on their pigtails or um, or tying them onto their pencils because they're so pretty. So basically all you do is gather it up. Now you need to tie it with a bow and what I'm going to do is give myself just over a foot of ribbon. For some reason just over a foot is a lot easier to tie than just a plain foot. I'm going to cut it on an angle. And I can trim that up later if I want to, or maybe I'll get lucky and it'll be perfect just the way it is. I am just simply wrapping it around. I'm going to tie a shoelace kind of bow, just like you would tie your sneakers or your boots. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But as I go, I'm going to try to um, keep the pattern to the outside so that when I pull my bow, it's going to, um, I'm going to see more of the pattern. Since it's only patterned on one side, I want to make the most of it. The thing I really like about this ribbon is that it's really soft. I bought pattern ribbon before at the craft store and it's just so stiff and unmanageable. And this is so easy to work with. I want to show you another little trick too. And this is pretty easy, but I really didn't, didn't know this tip until recently. It's how to make a V-notch. So what you want to do is fold your ribbon in half and then you're simply going to cut right like that. Oops. And then you get a perfect little V-notch. Right? If I hold it against the, uh, the cardboard, you can see. That's really, really cute. But I don't know if I want that for this since I got a really pretty angle there and it's just the right length. I'll probably just cut the side at an angle too. But I wanted to show you how to do that in case you wanted to try that as well. All right, so now we're going to make the tag, and this is really the fun part. I am using the um, unstrung merchandise tags, and I also want to give you another tip. My kids are going to make these. I am making the, um, the prototype, but they're actually going to make the valentines. So what I do before I say, hey, kids, want to craft, I get all my supplies together, and I put everything right in one of these um, clear picture frames. You could use any sort of tray that you have. Uh, any place you could put everything together because you don't want to run off, leave your kids unattended with a glue gun while you're hunting for the button that you forgot. So I could put everything right here and carry it to the kitchen table where they can work. So that's just my quick tip for you today. Oh, one more tip I have. Um, I, I don't own this uh, postage stamp punch we're going to use, but uh, one of my girlfriends do. So what we do is we get together when we get some new punches and supplies. We bring cardstock, make a pot of coffee, and we just punch each other's punches. So we get to have punch outs from dies and punches that we don't own. So it's really a great way to stretch your supplies and, you know, share and sharing is caring, remember? So it's just a lot, kind of a fun thing to do. Plus it's an excuse to get together with your girlfriends, right? Right. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> oh my goodness. So here I have a unstrung merchandise tag. I'm just going to poke out the little hole in the middle. And uh, on the, the mat side, I'm going to stamp to and from. And this is just a simple little stamp. Um, from Purple Onion, but there are different companies that make it, or you could just you know, write it out. It's not that big of a deal, but since I have a stamp for it, by golly, I'm going to use it. All right, now this needs to dry. I'm just going to heat set it for a second with my heat gun, because uh, I don't want it to smear when I flip it over. And I'm going to grab a scrap paper, a piece of scrap paper, and put my tag on it, because I'm going to do some inking on the glossy side, and it is going to get a little messy. Okay, I've got a, um, just a, you could use a makeup sponge. This is a uh, Colorbox Stylus Blending Tool. These are my favorite blenders to use. 
and I'm just going to basically coat this with ink. It evens out as it dries, so it might look pretty splotchy now, but since this is a glossy paper, it, um, it'll be nice and even when you're done. These, uh, these tags are really fun to experiment with because you have one side that's glossy and one side that's matte. So, you know, for pretty much any te technique you want to try, um, it's got you covered. And it's got a really nice smooth surface, so it's really good for stamping. Now, I'm going to heat set this because this is going to take a while to dry otherwise. You could use Distress inks, but I find Distress inks take a lot longer to dry. I think they have a little more um, juiciness to them. So I'm using this just a Stampin' Up! ink pad in Melon Mambo. And it's the same ink I'm using throughout this project. I'm going to set this aside while we work on our uh, little embellishments. Now what I did for the uh, honeycomb for the Be Mine tag is actually, this isn't a honeycomb die, it was just, um, just a die that I picked up in the clearance bin at Big Lots, but I thought it looked honeycomb enough that I could use it for this. And one of these pieces, I just cut them out of scraps in my scrap bin. I can get three tags out of one of these if I want to cut them flush, kind of like I did here. Or uh, two, if I want to let it all hang out. I like to let it all hang out, but you can do what you want to do. Or if you need to conserve supplies, of course, you can cut it a little bit shorter. If you don't have this, you could um, use maybe drywall mesh. You could paint it. You could um, use some sequin waste. You could use, you know, embossing folder with this texture. Or you could rubber stamp a, a honeycomb pattern on. It's really, you know, make it work with what you have at home. So I'm grabbing one of these little postage stamps. And it's going to be kind of hard to see against the white, but there we go. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So I think I'll zoom in digitally later so you can see a little bit more of a close up what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to ink up my stamp. This is one of the little inchies from Ink It Inkadoo. It says Be Mine Valentine, and it's a cute little bumblebee. And there's actually nine different um, sayings in this set. And we'll bring it right up so you can see it. And now I'm simply going to use colored pencils to color this. I have a um, aquamarine and a orange, oh this is a sunburst yellow rather, and you can use any brand you want. These are Prismacolors, these are what I have, so I'm using them, but you know if you have Prang or Crayola that'll work just as well. And you want to quickly color this in. It's just a classroom valentine, you don't need to be fussy with it. Um, and notice I didn't have to heat set this because I'm going in with a colored pencil and this is stamping ink. Uh, it's designed for stamping, it's dye based and it dries very quickly. If I want I could ink the edges of this but it's going to stand out really well against the pink tag and the yellow honeycomb so I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just coloring the flowers and the bees belly. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way so you can see what I'm doing but this is not rocket science, I'm just coloring in with a colored pencil. Same like you would with a coloring book. The kids are going to do this. It's uh, just fine. You don't have to stress about it. Now, I'm going to get my tag back again. I'm going to use hot glue. And the reason I'm going to use hot glue is I can just put some hot glue on the square, stick it down, and that's going to be enough to hold the whole thing together. And what I'm going to do, instead of cutting it, I'm actually going to tear it because I want to have kind of a rugged, organic look. That's going to go there, and this is going to be hot glued on top. I'm going to check to see if my hot glue is hot. I think by golly it is. And I'm simply going to apply some on the back of this. And I'm using a low temperature hot glue gun. So if you are working with kids, you uh, can use your low temp hot glue gun, or just uh, use some tacky glue and give it a chance to dry. So see, this is going to squeeze between those holes and tack everything down at once. So I'm just going to hold it for a second while it sets up. And then we're going to use some Baker's Twine to add a little pizzazz to this. Um, one of my favorite combinations is yellow, turquoise, and pink. And so I'm going to grab some turquoise Baker's Twine get with this ink pad out of the way before I stick my hand in it. Quite, uh, quite likely to happen. And I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to cut off enough that I can wrap this around twice. A lot of times I work off the spool, but um, I'm fairly confident this is going to give me about the right length. So I'm just going to wrap it and then bring it around to the front and tie it. And then I'm just going to kind of spread the uh, the strings apart so it looks kind of fancy and nice. And all these little, when I have little scraps of Baker's Twine, another tip for you is I'll just kind of keep them all in a pile and then when I'm doing a scrapbook page, you could take those little scraps and just kind of stick them through the holes in the button and then, and then um, 
hold the other you know what I'm just going to show you I'm going to show you this tip because I think it's a lot of fun it's really frugal too so you know you end up with these little scraps like this don't throw them away because you can just grab a button and you can thread them through it's kind of like a, a faux faux stitching you could either thread them through and knot them if it's long enough or just put them through you might need to lick the ends to get the <laughs> to get the um, string to go through and I should have picked a button with two holes. That would be quicker. <laughs> and then, uh, wee, that split apart. Pretty sure you get the idea of what I'm, what I'm saying here. There we go. And then I can just glue this onto something, and it looks like I've stitched it. So I think that's kind of cool. I think that's a really, um, a really time-saving kind of fun little technique to do. But I'm just going to glue a button on here. There we go. When I used to say so, like if my if my mother would say something and I was being a, a wiseacre and I'd say so, and she'd say so, so button on ice cream. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> it's like quite an interesting comeback. Probably just to shut us up and make us think about it. So a button on ice cream. There, you have, you have something new to say, a new saying. Okay, I think that's just cute, gosh darn it. All right, now we're going to attach this to our easy gather over here. This is, you know, this would be just a cute favor all on its own, but you do need a tag that says to and from. So hence, we've got our cute little tag here. Uh, you can probably see the possibilities of these cute little tags. I'm going to cut off about 10 inches of baker's twine here. I can measure it just to be sure. 10 should be, 10 should suffice. Because what I want is a tag that's going to be long enough that I can... Um, thread it through itself so the tag can be removed without ripping it because I get a lot of comments from kids believe it or not and I think it's really sweet and they'll say that they save their tags from like their gifts and um, use them as bookmarks or just hang them up as decorations I think that's so cute so a lot of times I like to put kids names on their tags make it kind of personal and then then they have a cute little bookmark and they can um, you know just have something that's theirs and not store-bought and you know completely unique um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around. I'm going to get it under the bow. That will just make it a little secure, a little more secure. And I'm going to um, wiggle this tag in between the baker's twine loop here. Just like you would if you were uh, pricing something for a tag sale and you had pre-strung tags. Just the same way. I'm just going to give it a little tug and that's going to hold it um, on there nice and secure. And it's, it's, also, it's also just really cute that way. So there you have it. I want to thank Paper Mart for sponsoring our video today. Check them out online at www.papermart.com where we make you look even better. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.